Hello everyone, I'm Linear C and I'm super excited to be a part of Flame Pitfiles 2024. This is my first time ever running for this amazing event and I'm hoping to put on an amazing show for y'all tonight. I am going to be playing Resident Evil 2 Remake 2019. As Claire, we're going to be doing um, her A story in G+, and we get to use a rocket launcher. Um, so, without further ado, um, I'm going to draw it over to my wonderful commentator, Big Scared, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, hello. I am Big Scared. I'm a queer writer caster here on Twitch. I play a lot of scary games. And I am honored to once again join my good friend Lanier to support her on this journey with Claire and Sherry. So thank you so much for having me. And it's always a pleasure. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, but Ophelia, would you like to tell us what the people have chosen? Which soundtrack we're going to be doing as well as which costume is Claire going to be wearing this fine evening in Raccoon City? <laughs> the People's Choice Awards today have the 1998 soundtrack, choosing as our top soundtrack, as well as Claire's noir costume for our run. I'm really excited to see these. Nice, nice choice, y'all. I'm super excited as well. Let's get her in costume. Claire. Uh, I'm not going to put the filter on. Set that right, right? Okay. Not to use. Nope. Okay. Just making sure. Um, and then I'm going to start in the game. I'll start the countdown um, in three, two, one, and then you all can start the clock. So here we go. We're playing on assistant mode. I'm going to skip these cutscenes, so three, two, one, go. Good luck! Thank you so much. Here we are starting at the gas station of all places. I'll check it out. In this wonderful Raccoon City evening. But scared, would you like to kind of go through a little bit of the story a little bit while we get into the action? Just for these fine people to understand what's going on. Yeah, we are currently playing as Claire Redfield, which you are familiar which if you're familiar with the original Resident Evil, she is the younger sister of Chris. Uh, Chris works for the Raccoon City Police Department as part of the special tactics and recon team. Uh, he is currently not responding to her calls. And so, like a dutiful sister and a caring member of the family, she's come to the city looking for him uh, just to see if he's okay. Attention and unfortunately, the timing of this is at the same time as the zombie outbreak. And so Claire is thrust into a survival situation she was not expecting to be in. But luckily, because of who she is and who she knows, she does have a little bit of combat training, even though she is a civilian important to note that Claire is a college student. She's on vacation and she chose to be here of all places. It's like the end of the world. You would like to talk a little bit about uh, how I took that damage from the zombies yes. here? Because we're currently in caution mode. People yes. might be wondering why. Why would you want to get bit by a zombie? But there is a reason why I tell you that. Yeah, so that zombie in particular is really important for the speed run. Uh, and it only for the Claire scenario, mind you. Because for some reason, in Resident Evil Engine, the femme body models move faster in a damaged state. So Claire simply runs faster when she is hurt. That can save three to five minutes across the entire run. It is substantial. And so the sooner you put her into the caution state, the better it is for speed purposes. That zombie in particular is the one we want to use to do this because if you take two hits from it, it'll put you in enough damage that if you get bit one more time, it will not throw you into the danger state. Now, you might think hurt is good, right? You don't want to be too hurt because once Claire gets thrown into the danger state, she's at her slowest speed. So we want to keep her a little damaged, but not too damaged 
as a motivational tool so she runs faster. Uh, Leon does not have that experience. His fastest run speed is his default speed, and so that's why this route is unique. We want to use the risk reward to our benefit. Now, you'll notice Linear is also choosing to either avoid altogether or strategically engage with the zombies. Nobody knows what caused this. That is because she's going straight for a rocket launcher here. She's going to be picking it up after this discussion with Marvin. We're going to open this gate using the knife. This is the only time you'll see her use the knife. But for the rest of the run, we're going to be using rockets. Not just for combat, but for navigation as well. There's several points where the rocket launcher becomes a central tool in skipping dialogue and ensuring that the speed run is at its optimal state. Thank you so much for that amazing um, explanation, Big Scared. You do it way better than I do. <laughs> so I really appreciate you. I got um, you. So yeah, like in addition to what Big Scared said, um, the reason why I did what I did, we could have just went straight from the, for the rocket launcher but you actually save a bit more time if you, you know, go through the first part with the gun. And while that gate is opening, um, you can take advantage of that time and, you know, save a couple seconds by getting it later. So it's just, it doesn't save a whole lot, but it does make a difference. And since we met Marvin, you mind if I pop in here to remind chat that we have a lovely little incentive to save him? Or uh, I, I guess spare him over saving him <laughs> yes we we love uh, marvin so please chat get get your donos in we want to spare him yeah we don't have a lot of time to meet that incentive either because we need to make the decision after the first boss fight we so are, we're, we're, we're coming up on that pretty quick yeah, come on yeah. chat we we can do this we're only 10 percent of the way there but i know y'all can do it All right, so I mentioned that Lanier would be... Yeah, I didn't get it this time, y'all. It's all right, Marvin just wants to make his case for why we should spare him. Exactly. Definitely. Um, and now I didn't even go to the... Front. It's okay. It's okay. okay. So if we want to explain that, so normally what you do is um, by using the blast of the rocket launcher, you can use that to uh, get Marvin talking. It's actually pretty cool, but it's really hard to pull off, but uh, we didn't get it this time, but there's still some really cool skips that we can check out as well that are coming up. Yeah, that's a pretty frame perfect skip. And so while it is really cool to show off, I think it's important to note that it is extremely difficult to do. Regardless, we're well on our way. We're getting our medallions. You might be wondering why we need these medallions. Resident Evil has the very fun experience of needing key items to progress. And there is a specific route we need to take to exit the police station because we cannot leave the way we came in. Uh, and that is through a sub-basement elevator that can only be activated by putting three medallions into a statue that will grant us access. All right, so we're coming up on the next skip. In just a moment. So usually Marvin is gonna yak 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 to come down and check things out, but we don't want to listen to it. There we go. We did it. Yes. <laughs> that one is much easier than the first one. It, it was just Marvin, as as Big said. It was just Marvin making his case as to why we should spare him. Yeah. Yeah, I would personally love to see us spare Marvin today. He's one of the most important characters in the story of this game. And in many ways, he is responsible for the survival of our protagonist. So it, to me, it would be poetic to let him persist. He is. I have to agree. I don't want to necessarily blast Marvin. <laughs> but, you He's know, a good guy. 
if we gotta save the frames, he's gotta go <laughs> sometimes. So chat's but, gotta make that decision for us. Chat, come on, we we can spare Marvin. Please. I know, I know we're going fast, but please. Mm -hmm. Classic Resident Evil soundtrack right there. It's so good. Let's see if we can get past. Nope. It's in the way. Sometimes you can slip past that guy, but it's all RNG. He just wasn't in a good spot today. Today wasn't his day. Yeah. So in addition to the way damage plays out in this game, there is a little bit of RNG in enemy behavior in terms of their pathing and movement, as well as how aggressive they are. Uh, they will usually start in the same location, but depending on how they react to you can add a lot of spice to the run. In addition to that, there's something called uh, damage adjustment, also known as adaptive difficulty for this game. The more damage you take, the more shots you land, the better you play, the harder it will get, which will increase the aggressiveness of the enemy AI. So as we can see Linear progress, the better she plays, the harder the game will get. And there's a point where I will point out that it's important that she's taking some shots that are not necessarily at target. Now we've had a very important object picked up there, uh, a battery for the detonator we had already collected. We're gonna use that in the attic to get our third medallion, at which point we will be on our way out of the Raccoon City Police Department. Here's our second medallion right here at the unicorn statue. I'm pretty sure this is a good moment for an update if there's anything from Ophelia. Well, I have a $5 dono from Mars that says justice for Marvin. And <laughs> I think we need to get a few more of those $5 donos in on that justice for Marvin dono train. I think we can do it. I think we can spare Marvin, y'all. Please. He's a good guy. In his heart. He's a good guy. We love and respect Marvin in this house. We do. Now, you might have noticed Linear walk over to that bookshelf and open the door as the blast was happening. This is very important because normally when the detonation goes off, that bookshelf will fall over and obstruct your path back out of this attic. But because the door was open when that animation would normally take place, we essentially block it and negate it from happening, which means that Linear can simply run away when the liquor spawns and when the zombie drops and not have to actually deal with that room ever again. All right, and we're almost out of here. We got all three of our medallions. Beautiful stair skating, by the way. Thank you so much. Which I want to point out, Linear's doing this on a controller, on a console port of the game. Stair skating in this context is so difficult, and you make it look so easy. I appreciate that. That does help, like, that first Marvin skip, y'all, that is so hard, and I got it all day. And I guess, yeah, Marvin's like, nope. But we have so many awesome things to show y'all tonight, so... Like, look at this. Trucking. This is beautiful. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's something a little bit less beautiful at the end of this hallway. <laughs> um, Hello? We hear the little stippy steppies of our best friend, Sherry. Sherry is a special person that we will be playing as later on in the run. But unfortunately, along the way, we do have to deal with Sherry's dad. Everyone say hi to William and bye to William. That's our first boss. Hi, William. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, William. This way. That was so quick. It, you probably missed it if you blinked. I, I did, yeah. and then you were done the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I beat Sherry. I played that little game with her. See if we can get up the stairs first. And I won today. You got it. You got it. Okay, so this is a fine example where you can skip dialogue. If you want to talk about it, Big Scary, go ahead. But yeah. I've heard this speech so many times. 
Normally, during this sequence, when the catwalk is being slid into place, Sherry will start talking about her family. And the important details that we're going to note here is that both of her parents work for Umbrella Corporation. She doesn't know exactly what they do, but the detail that comes through in her story is that they kind of leave her to do her own thing. And so because of that, Claire and Sherry have a strong kinship of like having family but not being super close to them. And in the cutscene we just skipped, the chief of police has taken Sherry into his custody. Um, this is relevant for a wide variety of reasons, some of them more savory than others, but essentially he's taken her to the orphanage. This room always makes me clench, and you just made it look so easy <laughs> how you just don't even look at those liquors and just just say bye and as they if just, you don't look at them they don't exist <laughs> they, they can't even hurt you don't acknowledge them it's fine the liquors are free <laughs> I, I mean you're you're not helping this five dollar dono from alien crustacean who says because re speed runs go by so fast i still have no idea what a liquor is and at this point i'm too afraid to ask but we didn't get to see them so I'm sorry. There's still one more in this hallway we have to deal with because unfortunately looking up makes you look at it and looking down doesn't solve that problem either. Uh, but we're essentially back out of the parking garage. It was asked at some point how different this run is from the Leon run. Those of you who are curious, uh, Leon would have to spend a lot more time in there and he would have to fight dogs instead. So honestly, I'm glad we got what we got. I'm glad too. I don't like fighting the doggos. No, me either. All right, we are making our trip back into Raccoon City Police Station, which means we have maybe two minutes left on that decision. How are we doing? Chat, we we might. Uh, I'm a little worried about Marvin here. I'm a little worried here. We've we've got a little bit of time, but we're very 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 close to closing that. Poor Marvin, as Jadelyn with this five dollar donation says, he was only two days from retirement. I know. <laughs> All right, we're getting really close, y'all. There is some light puzzling we will have to do along the way. So, fun fact, this is Chief Iron's office. He has a hobby of taxidermy. I'm gonna let that ominous uh, tone just sort of sink in on you for a minute. We're gonna ignore all of his cool artifacts and go up to the roof because there is still a fire happening from the helicopter that crashed earlier. And we do have to put that out to navigate. In this room, we're going to grab a big cog. And then we're also going to grab an electrical part from the closet. Uh, this is another point where Claire's route deviates from Leon's. She has the key to this door and thus does not need to get the power panel part from the garage like Leon would have to. The downside is this zombie just really wants a hug. And sometimes he gets it, sometimes he doesn't. You dodged him so effortlessly there that, like, Thank you. Whew. Uh, and then we have to come down here and deal with two more kind of spicy zombies. One in particular, she definitely wants a hug, but I don't want to hug her, so I'm going to avoid her. Yeah, you you're screaming, the... she wants a hug. <laughs> you ever been at the family barbecue and your aunt just wants to give you the full mouth kiss? This is her. That's her energy. Not today. Not today. I'm good. Thank you, though. We're social distancing. <laughs> now, right. the star of the show is about to appear here. Lanier, how do we feel about Mr. X? Um, I don't like the hat he wears. <laughs> Jesus, stay back. All right, so I'm gonna need to know about Marvin. Okay, better move it. Yeah, it's time. Sadly, it's time, sadly, while Marvin was only two days from retirement, we're not gonna be able to spare him. All right. Oh. 
This makes me so sad, y'all, but I guess we gotta do it. Can we get some faith pop in chat to send him out with respect and love? <laughs> Hi, Marvin. Bye, Marvin. Bye, Marvin. Sorry. Baby we are sorry. Barbecue. We didn't invite him to. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Now that rocket in particular is really important because there's a liquor in that hallway that cannot be seen from the doorway. And so you don't know exactly what it's gonna do and it's too spicy to just run out there. We're gonna double back as fast as we can, hopefully not have Mr. X pop up right in front of us. Oh, okay. <gasps> let's go. Uh, well, lately, he's been like coming down the stairs, so I wasn't sure to say, oh, there you are. Hi, yeah. Friend. Mr. X is programmed in a really interesting way where if you lose line of sight on him, he can and will appear in front of you in a way that will block your path. And so if you are not using the rocket launcher, you'll notice that a lot of those category speedrunners will use the pistol to just shoot some shots to keep his attention. We don't do that, which makes it really interesting to see where he's going to show up and what he does when he gets there. So he's cooperating. I love this for you. I hear him stomping around. It's OK. It's OK. He's just <laughs> going on a walk. <laughs> Puzzle time. Yes. Good old clock tower puzzle because, of course, it's Resident Evil. The reason why we're doing this, for those of you who don't know, is that there is a power panel part at the top of the clock tower uh, that you need to knock down using the bell itself, which means we need to activate and also repair the clock. We need the big gear and the small gear, and we need to use the big gear twice. It's kind of cumbersome because you take it out, you put it back in, and mm -hmm. lock things out. Mm -hmm. In a casual playthrough, it's really confusing to be like, no, but I use the big gear and not realize you need to like go get it and use it somewhere else. So this is just a really cheeky puzzle. I got jeans right outside that door. Okay. Yep. Bye, buddy. He knows we where we're at. Smoking. <laughs> He's too slow for us. <laughs> but the cool part is now that we have both parts for the power panel, we can simply take them back to Chief Iron's office and get out of this police station, which makes this segment for Claire a little bit shorter than Leon's. We don't have to open any shutter gates. We don't have to deal with the garage. It's a much more streamlined experience. Oh, I hear him stomping. He's mad. <laughs> it's all right. He can't even come in here. <laughs> He's mad. He wasn't invited to the to the party. Right. Excuse me. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, are we ready for Sherry? Because it's Sherry time. Where's Sherry that? time. Oh, such an ugly doll. I hate that doll. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're familiar with this run, you'll probably know this puzzle by now because in a casual experience, this puzzle is a nightmare. I learned this trick from Linear, that if you just move the first block to the third position, you can solve it from there easy peasy, because all the RNG will shake out. And I am baffled that that works every time. <laughs> I'm just disappointed. I was telling Biscuit earlier, like, I had gotten it to where I didn't even have to move anything. It just fell into place. That, yeah. like, never happens. is this all right so we're gonna be running around here as sherry for a little bit 
I think we've got maybe a good two minutes if there's any updates or donations. No problem. I have a couple donos. I have a $30 dono from Sailor Jade with no comment. I also have a $28 dono from Madge Danvers with no comment as well. Thank you so much for those donos, y'all. It's all going towards Malala Fund. It is all going towards funding girls' education. I also want to let everybody know that we have opened up a couple bid wars for the next run. Uh, the Chrono Trigger run, we have a couple things like name Chrono, name Frog, name Luca, and name Marl. Y'all, you gotta, you gotta get these in. We gotta get some cool names for our next run. That sounds so exciting. I Everyone love get your donations more. in. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be, that's gonna be an exciting run. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that run later. Chrono Trigger is always a good run. Always. You are gonna be so fucking sorry! Meow, Chief Irons is not a nice man. I'm very sorry, chat. He's got some, some, uh, unsavory, but very memorable voice lines coming in through here. <laughs> Our task is simple. We just can't get caught. We're playing the best game of tag or hide and seek or skeletons in the closet, whichever version you are familiar with. We're going to play that with him in this moment. Now, Linear is so brave because she's using the swag strat right now. She's using a thermos and a coffee <laughs> pot to block his flashlight from hitting it's her. All over now. This part of the run used to give me so much anxiety. Now I just find it so much fun. It's so good. I know you're in here. The worse it's gonna be. He never once looks behind him. He's such a good detective. He's extremely good at hide and seek. <laughs> once again, using the coffee pot for coverage. You're so brave. You're so brave. gotta be here somewhere all right we're oh, waiting for him to knock no. stuff over and then we can run God damn it. now because linear is the bravest soul i've ever met she's not even gonna hide in the second location she's just gonna stand there and assert dominance over him enjoy just the profound gaming that's happening right now <clears throat> I love this part because it's like one of my only chances to get a drink of water. So I'm just going to relax for a moment. <laughs> Chat, do not forget to hydrate. This has been very, very high intensity. We have a moment to finally hydrate. Very good message. Yeah. <laughs> Join me. Drink some water. Stretch. Yeah. Normally, uh, you would have to hide under a table while Irons looks over this path to make sure you're not standing there. And then you would have to like crouch behind a shelf that is very precarious and stressful. But the fun thing about playing this on lowest difficulty is that his vision cone is actually really small. And so that specific spot Lanier was standing on is outside of his ability to perceive. And so it's safe to stand there as long as you make sure that you're on the right spot of the floor. It does not work on harder difficulties though, so don't get too bold, gamers. I did personally replay this recently and can attest that that does work. It is <laughs> such a cool little skip. <laughs> it's very it's so fun. much fun, yeah. And that is the end of Sherry. We are free from playing as her for the rest of the game, which means we are being thrust back into the capable shoes of Claire Redfield. Good to see you again, Claire. Just you wait, asshole. Yeah, Claire has a bit of a potty mouth. <laughs> yeah. So I apologize to everyone in chat. But, uh... Yeah, it's just kind of spicy. Luckily, we are well on our way to our next destination. 
because this is, in fact, a Resident Evil game, uh, we have to traverse the city and end up at the orphanage to save our little friend Sherry. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a fan. Uh, our, our biggest fan is here to support us. He didn't bring his hat <laughs> because he heard what you said about it. <laughs> fan slash stalker, I guess. Listen, he's just trying to give you your flowers for how fast you're going. <laughs> he found I'm a new hat. To look he at wants your opinion. <laughs> yes, yes. He just wants your opinion on his new hat. <laughs> so another place that this route deviates from the Leon route is that Claire gets to go behind the gun shop rather than through it. Uh, this means that we get to experience the orphanage rather than Kendo. Uh, so, we're not going to experience Kendo, unfortunately. I salute him. He's never going to be seen in this part of the run. That does mean, though, that we do get to meet a very special zombie. She's at the bottom of the stairs. Hello, Misty. We love you. We respect you. She's named that because her model is based off of the zombie in the original Resident Evil 2. And that's what the community named her because she looked like Misty from Pokemon. Here come the doggos. Maybe we can get some pup time in the chat. Yeah, yeah. These dogs are free as long as you take the right pathing. Uh, and Linear is doing this expertly. There will be more dogs both on the way to the next bus and on the other side of the bus. But as long as we keep this energy up, we should be fine. We're going to oh. use similar strats to the liquors because if you don't perceive them too closely, they often will miss you. Sometimes they do get lucky, though. Yeah, that's hit or miss. Mm -hmm. It's less reliable than with the liquors. Oh, really? Really? Double doggoed. Yeah. Super spicy doggoes. And this is why we pick up the safety herb, because sometimes you do get thrown into the damage state, and we want to make sure that we keep her only in caution. So great use of that. And get Yeah, just the sometimes those dogs don't even see me, and other times they're like, nope, I want to bite a clear. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, ooh, new chew toy. Let's go. <laughs> now, Iron's office is a bit disheveled right now, as you can tell. We're about to find out the reason why. Um, and it is unfortunate that the fan club meeting is being held in the basement, but. All of our greatest fans are down here. Right We're going to see a cameo from Mr. X. We're going to see a cameo from Sherry's dad. It's going to be great. But don't worry, because we're getting to the most important part of the run, which is the inevitable sewer segment. Hurry! Keep going. She's like, bye, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't care what happened to her. Right. She's like, you keep up. It's fine. <laughs> but the cool part about all of our fans showing up in the same place is that they're busy dealing with each other. And for the rest of the run, we are free from the burden of Mr. X, which is a courtesy that Leon does not get. So down I'm so here, sad because her outfit is so beautiful and it's getting messed up while this girl's so hard. Sorry, continue. Yeah, I just I can't imagine that she'll ever wear it again. It probably smells terrible. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so the goal down here is to not only navigate the sewers, but find an, an eventual escape. There are several types of puzzles we're going to be solving simultaneously. Uh, one is a navigation puzzle. We're going to need a special type of valve handle for it. On, one is a doorway puzzle. We're going to be collecting a bunch of chess pieces for it. And the third is also the how to save Sherry dilemma, which will ultimately culminate with us escaping this place. Uh, you'll notice Linear is shooting a bunch of rocket. She does this for funsies but also because it lowers the difficulty adjustment of the game. Missing shots intentionally in certain sequences makes the game think that you're um, 
not playing as well as you would otherwise, and it resists the urge to ramp up the difficulty. And so by intentionally shooting a few rockets into the water there, we get to have a nice little moment for ourselves. We get to have a blast. And we also get to not get punished for being so dang good at this game. <laughs> Ooh, I noticed right. you're going for the, the king and queen first. Look at you, bold gamer. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to give some time so we don't have to wait for that gate. So and meanwhile, while it's opening it up, we're going to take care of some other business first. Yeah. And uh, hopefully that'll save a couple seconds off of our final time. We'll see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like this play. Now, I don't like this place. I, I want to be very clear. This place is... It is a time. Uh, William, Sherry's father, has been a very busy man. Uh, he is possessed by the singular urge to have a very large and unconventional family. And as a result, some of his other offspring are just sort of hanging out down here. These G entities are trouble on a casual playthrough. They have a grab attack that can stun you. They can hit you with an implant uh, parasite that can not only do damage to you, but poison you over time. And when you're in the poison state, you walk really slow. Uh, so not only is navigating around here really difficult because you don't want to spawn too many of them, dealing with them in the first place just kind of sucks. So having the rocket launcher through here is essential. We're going to grab a couple chest plugs to navigate this place. We need the queen plug to access the king plug, but ultimately we will need both of them to get out of here. And so Linear is going to do her best to get through this and also avoid that zombie that just dropped because now it's active. Beautiful. It is important to point out that this room also has a high-powered weapon. So if you were not using the rocket launcher, you would probably be stopping to grab the spark shot from this room. Uh, or if you're playing as Leon, probably the flamethrower instead, depending on which category you're playing. Um, this room is really important on other sort of speed runs, but for this one, we still don't need it. We're too powerful without it. All right, beautiful. We got our chest pieces. Now we gotta go take care of this guy. Mm -hmm. He's sad because we left him there. <laughs> he was waiting for us to come back from the store with more party supplies. <laughs> so we just got one more of these. Yeah, we got a party crasher here. They're gonna pop up any moment. There they are. And there they go. Oh, uh, don't get stuck. Okay. And now because Linear's already opened the other shutter gate, she's just gonna run right over there. Uh, we're gonna take a small elevator and grab the last chess piece we need. I'm pretty sure this is a good moment for any updates, Ophelia, if you've got anything for us. Well, I want to let y'all know that we have opened up a Chrono Cat ending for the upcoming Chrono Trigger run. So that will take uh, take our run to a second save file, which will showcase the 100% ending, but with 10 additional cats. We need oh. some cats. Nice. We do need some cats. We need some premium cat content to balance out all these dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so exciting. Thank you so much for that update. All right, we are at this part of the sewer. Now, it is worth noting that um, if you were to grab the spark shot or the flamethrower, this would also be the part of the game where you could go back and re-access the police department. There is a route back up through the first elevator that we dropped down under the statue all the way back in the first 10 minutes of this run. Uh, there's a utility of doing that. There's some high-powered ammo. Marvin is also there if he's still around, those sorts of things. But because we don't have that weapon, we're not going to be utilizing that. And so we're not going to take the opportunity to go back to the police station at this point. Instead, we're going to make a beeline straight for the chess piece puzzle, and we're going to go as quickly as we can to save Sherry. 
because she's a little hurt right now. Uh, she's got an upset tummy, and her eye is, is not doing so good. And she's laying on some garbage, and we gotta fix that. Oh no, yeah. not the tummy hurty. Yeah, she's got a stummy hurty. Won't be fast. Hopefully mm -hmm. she won't hurt too bad. We just gotta figure out this chest puzzle. And we are done. Beautifully done. Very efficient puzzle. All right, Sherry. On my way. I just want to pop in. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to uh, mention this $25 dono from Turkey12 that's saying, loving this Resident Evil run and commentary. I'm 100% with you on that, Turkey12. This has been a great run, and we've got some amazing comms going on. Thank oh, you so thank much you. for your donation. That means a lot to me. I'm so glad that I could play this game for y'all. So we mentioned earlier that the rocket launcher is an important tool for the run, not just weapon. Uh, I want to highlight that here because Lanier is using it to, escape, to skip an entire phase of this boss fight. Normally, you would have to run around that room, which is locked because the fire has exploded at the entrance and he is at the other side while his big meaty arm comes through the ceiling and tries to scrape at you. Uh, it's a lot of time loss. It's not fun to deal with. He cannot really be hurt in that state. But if you shoot the shutter and the ceiling, it will do enough damage to him through splash damage that it just cycles us to the next phase of the fight. In which case, we have the simple goal of hitting him with a really big container. It kind of sounds like something out of a cartoon. It does. This is <laughs> some awful. Looney Tunes nonsense. <laughs> it's beautiful. Watching you do this with the rocket launcher makes me so jealous because casually, I think I died four or five times on this thing. Yeah. It's still hard because of his little teeny tiny legs. <laughs> Don't yeah. skip leg day, chat. So many times. You're so brave for actually aiming at his legs. I aim at the floor under his <laughs> I've tried that before and it feels like in every way I do, like it's like dodge, dodge, dodge. <laughs> that was a beautiful one cycle, by the way. It is very common to not do enough damage to stun him in a specific location and have to hit him twice with that. So you did that so well. I, I'm sitting here gooped, like I can't. Oh, we got Sherry. I know. She's she's having a hard day, gamers. That cable car. Her tummy's so upsetty she can't walk anymore. And so we're gonna make sure that she gets out of here. Uh at this point, our companion is is having a really rough time. But we know that her mother works for Umbrella. And so maybe as someone with medical expertise, she can help. And so from this point forward, we're going to take her to the lab and try to get her some medicine. Oh, good. The cable car. Luckily, yeah. Sherry has exactly what we need to go there. Exactly. Okay. Better check everything. I was just going to say I'm kind of sad, y'all, because we're almost at the end of the run. I know. This is the point of no return. This yeah, is the part where casually... Moving. It would be like, are you sure you want to leave? You can never come back to Raccoon City. But we're and here. And she just mysteriously gets Claire's jacket and she isn't wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In that sequence of cutscenes we just skipped, there's a really heartwarming moment where Sherry is expressing how not good she's feeling. And Claire is like, my brother gave me this jacket. It's good luck and I'm going to give it to you. But because we weren't wearing it, it just sort of materializes out of nowhere. And so it is a gift that chat has bestowed to Sherry. Thank you for donating towards the Noora costume to make this happen. Yeah, thank you all so much. I love this costume as well. All right, so we're just going to let her rest there. Yeah. So her tummy hopefully feels better while we get her the antidote. Yeah, sometimes you just need to lay down about it. And so she's getting a nice little rest. We're going to shoot that door. And there's a specific reason why. And it's 
The fact that there is an armored zombie on the other side of that door. They're wearing a flak jacket and sometimes also a helmet. And so their starting position is usually right on the other side of the door. But once you move into the cafeteria, they start walking. So if you shoot the door before you go into the cafeteria, you can hit them with splash damage through the door while they're still standing there in a fixed position. And you don't even have to deal with them. If Linear did not do that, he could have been anywhere on the other side of that door and would probably have asked for a hug. We don't like to give hugs. No. I don't. <laughs> not, in, not, to, not to people with such bad halitosis. <laughs> Your presence is urgently requested by Chief Cartwright in the East Area. All right. We are one third of the way through this lab. Uh, we've done the North Area. We need to do the West Area and the East Area. And we have to do them in a specific sequence because of course we do. We've only got level two access. And in order to get to the place with the medicine, we need level three access. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Lee has that. Because it wouldn't be a Resident Evil game without all the key cards, the kitchen sinks, the whole mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Even though we have a rocket launcher, we still yes. follow the rules. Although I'm pretty sure we couldn't rocket launch the catwalk <laughs> into place. I'm not sure that's how that works. That's true. <laughs> I'm sure there's some other things that we could have avoided, though. It's true. It's true. Unfortunately, we cannot avoid the growth in this space. Uh, this laboratory is specifically called the Nest, which means that is it is home to a bunch of creations that Umbrella has made. Among them are these plant monsters. It is important to note that these plant monsters are unique. They have a grab attack that can and will kill you automatically if you don't have a knife or a grenade on you. And so it is very important that Linear not get grabbed during this segment. Luckily, we know exactly where to go. We're getting the pesticide and we're going to solve the puzzles. I grabbed it, right? Yes, you did. I read a check <laughs> and walk all the way and don't have it. That's happened to me way too many times. You're so right. Solution to match cartridge capacity. Thank okay, you for the silence. I didn't <laughs> want to distract you. I know how that puzzle is. That was exactly where you I was. You knew at. what could happen. You knew what could happen. I knew it. So the solution to that puzzle, if you know it, is really simple. It's red, green, blue, red, green, blue. But if you mess up that sequence at all, recovery is so hard and time consuming because the liquid will be very difficult to redisperse in the way that you need it to be redispersed. So yeah, the silence was necessary. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had the exact same thought. I also yeah. just want to pop in this $5 dono from a tummy ache survivor who says, <gasps> hang in there, Sherry. Oh, we know that goodness. you can do Aww. it. Thank you so much. That, I'm sure Sherry will be very happy. We want to make her feel better. Yeah. Can we get a $5 dono train to make Sherry's stummy less hurty? I think that's a great idea. $5 dono train for the tummy hurty. So because this is Resident Evil and they have a maximalist approach to puzzles, here is our next one. This is the uh, wave device. There are several electrical panels throughout the nest that Linear will have to activate using this device. How it works is you need to know which of the codes at the top to input, and then you need to match the sine waves to be overlapping. This can be tricky if you don't know which one you need. It will always say on the box which one is needed, but there are some extraneous ones. There are certain patterns that you're not going to need on the speed run, which you would need in the casual run. And while you're navigating this, there are also lickers and zombies trying to give you hugs. And so this whole segment is a little chaotic. 
I also want to point out that because Linear is playing this on console with a controller, she's not able to utilize the third-party tools that a lot of PC players for this game are able to utilize that makes this process easier. And the fact that she's able to just adjust that on the fly so precisely and so cleanly, I it's incredible. Oh, thank you. Because that's all joysticks right Welcome there. Back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Ooh, damn. Should have packed my... Should have packed my parka. <laughs> parka. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I live for that, y'all. <laughs> Just saving the parka for the other side of the country. <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's good. It means you're fast. Now, of course, rather than taking the stairs up, we're going to double back and take the ladder because we're going to go right back to that dispersal place where we got the pesticide capsule. And then we'll be able to grab the key card and go. Looks like we have a little bit of hype coming in for that poor tummy hurdy train. I got a $5 dono from Anonymous purchasing a ticket. I've got a $15 dono from Anonymous purchasing three tickets and a $25 dono from Anonymous purchasing five tickets aboard that $5 tummy hurdy train. I also want to remind everybody about that Chrono Cat ending that is coming up on our next run. We are $105 out of the $3,000 needed to get that ending. So let's see if we can see some cats, chat. Wait, we, 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 want, we want cats. You know what always helps when my stomach hurty? Cats. True. True. Now this escape sequence is always a little bit spicy because inside this control room will be a plant monster and its positioning is a little... Oh, it was good! That was beautiful! Oh! Thank you, thank getting you. Getting such good RNG right now. That was beautiful, y'all. That was so if good. You knew, if you only knew, if you ever had your face eaten off by one of those plant monsters, you would understand how beautiful that was. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet. There's going to be a couple more later on in this run. You are so right. I am. Well, we got this. We got this. You know what else we're about to have? This antiviral agent, which means the stummy hurdy will be relieved. You did that chat with your yeah. donations. Yeah. This is going to be our final power panel that we're using the oscillator machine on. Uh, because Linear already knows what to input here, she had already pre-programmed the device without even seeing the machine, which I just want to point out, incredible, because I don't have that capacity to remember that sort of thing. <laughs> and we're going to... We're just going to run in here uh, through a room that is definitely not a boss arena. I don't know why anyone would think definitely this is a not. boss arena. Um, it doesn't, doesn't and then, look like a boss arena at all. Not even a little bit. And, and we're not going to notice how ominous this room is either. We're just going to um, conspicuously put the locket that was around Sherry's neck into a machine. And it's going to give us the antivirus for the virus that's ravaging this city. No big deal. Oh, wait, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> William's back with a vengeance. He's bigger than ever, and he knows where he's at. And there he goes. <laughs> Bye, William. That Bye, was William. so fast. The way you were able to execute all of those eyeball pops without him leaving that fixed position linear. You're so powerful. <laughs> Too powerful. You're so powerful. I have a wonderful team with me. How can I not be? It's true, but that's all you, gamer. Well, chat believes so too. I've got a $50 dono from Chief Beef 100 who says Linear C is the best. Loving this run so much. Donation goes to naming Chrono Waluigi. 
Wow. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Keep getting those donations and I'm so excited about the next run. I love Pilot Bigger. I think that would be wonderful. <laughs> you were you waiting to say that. <laughs> So you're like, is, it, is, it, is it my turn yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Hard. We're so close. We have the level four access. Our bestie Sherry has no longer an upsetty stummy. Uh, and unfortunately, she wants to tell us about it. But because we have a rocket launcher, we're going to ignore that conversation where she tells us how grateful she is and how glad she is to know us. So I just want everyone here, everyone here, Linear, uh, Ophelia, all of Fatal's production, everyone in the studio, everyone in chat, everyone who's donated to know that we appreciate you. We love you. We love that you're here. Uh, well, and Sherry is it. also grateful. <laughs> so I... Uh... <laughs> I just wanted a moment of silence. You gave me the green light, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want Sherry talking over me, talking over her. <laughs> She's talked enough. We we helped her tummy. We did our job. Now she yeah. needs to rest her mouth. Yeah, yeah. Can I pop in with a $5 dono from Kat? Yes. She says, my tummy also hurts. Right where, right there with you, Sherry. Just had a nice hot bath, some mint tea, and currently lying down about it. I think that's a good way Aww. to deal with tummy hurt. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is. Thank you so much for that donation. I also have a $5 dono from Should Have Packed My, and their comment <laughs> is Parka. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is amazing. Oh, <laughs> Thank you oh. for that donation. <laughs> uh, well, that she should have so said it faster. <laughs> <laughs> but because this is Resident Evil, we now have an escape sequence with a timer. Don't worry, Linear is so powerful that we're going to get through this with plenty of time left over. This uh, is. There we go. During this segment, Sherry has to unlock a door for us. This is a little tedious because she has little legs. And we only carry her so quickly. Uh, and so she's got to crawl across a vent, through a window, through some room that probably has some rubble in it. And then she's got to figure out how to open that door. And so in the meantime, we simply got to stay alive while various plant monsters show up. She'll give us an audio cue when the door is ready. And then we can get out of here. Oh my goodness, big scare. I thought you were about to break out. So you're playing through the door, through the window, through the wall. I was about to say. I got it. <laughs> Listen, oh I can't handle where the rockets fall, okay? <laughs> I thought we were gonna go there. <laughs> that would be sweet, but I didn't go there. <laughs> we oh, are instead sure. going okay. to the tram station. I had to make sure I had space because uh, I didn't get a second pouch. So, oh, yeah. Like, sometimes when I don't use the herb, I'll be like, what? There's no space. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. In peak Resident Evil remake fashion, uh, there is a requirement to pick up an object that you have to use immediately before the final boss fight to ensure that you have spaces for whatever gimmicks they're using for the final boss fight. Claire's gimmick is a machine gun that we will not be picking up because we have the rocket launcher. Uh, fun fact, the rocket launcher is Leon's gimmick for his final boss fight, but because we are playing this as a New Game Plus run, we have it as well. Okay, um, do you want to tell the people when time will be, or...? Yeah, so... Oh, 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 this... oh I get greedy, I get greedy! I get greedy, Oh, oh no, so greedy! <laughs> I did. I this is, did. This is still going to be a quick fight, even though Linear is running a little bit slower. The goal is to pop a bunch of eyeballs that will respawn on the front of William. He is invulnerable from the back and the sides. As long as she's able to uh, burst his bubble, so to speak, this will end quickly. We'll know yeah, that he's hopefully. close to the end when he starts crawling on all fours. 
And then when the cutscene happens, that is time. So it will unceremoniously happen very soon. Very, very, oh, there it is time. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Gee, that geez. was so good. <laughs> and there's I'll still take scene. it. I'll still 55, take it. 35. That I'll is so good. Uh, that is even so with the good. mistakes, we did good, y'all. Even with the mistakes, that is good. I'm, that I'm is sad. so good. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Thank you everyone who came to watch my run. I want to give a big shout out to Big Scared. Um, she was the one that introduced me to how this run works. Um, she is an amazing supporter, someone I like to call a friend, a great commentator. If you have a horror game, she is the person to go to. Uh, thank you for all your support. Uh, my wonderful host, Awkward Ophelia, she has also um, done commentary for this game as well. Um, she's an she's an amazing host, commentator, just an all around good person. I appreciate um, having you on my team. Um, to Lady Arcaders, um, to the to the Frank Patel's whole community for giving me a chance to showcase this because I had told myself like a year ago I watched a run from Frost Patel's where Sneagle was playing and she was my inspiration. I told Miss Scare, hey, can you teach me this? And I put my mind to it, and I'm here now. So I just want to encourage anybody who thinks they can't do a speed run, thinks they can't get here. Yes, you can. If you really want it, you can do it. Um, to Lady Arcaders, and lastly, to my son, Ken, who has watched his speed run so many times that he always says, Mommy, do we have to do Resident Evil 2 again? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate it so much. Linear, where can we find you if we wanted to watch more of these lovely, lovely runs? Um, I, um, my Twitch channel is Linear C. You can find me on twi uh, Twitter at uh, Linear C underscore Twitch because I couldn't take Linear C pretty much anywhere. Um, this is going to be Linear, Linear C, or Linear Canon, uh, something of that sort. Um, yeah, and what about you, Big Scared? Where can we find you? I live here on Twitch as Big Scared, or in other places on the internet as either Big Scared or I'm Big Scared with no spaces or punctuation. I just want to say thank you so much for having me again. It's It's been one of the most fulfilling moments for me as a speedrunner to be able to share my knowledge with you and watch you take it and run with it and improve on it and grow so dramatically and visibly and earnestly and it has been such a delight to watch your journey with this game thank you for approaching me almost a year ago about teaching you and thank you for taking me with you on this journey because it has been so cool to see thank you so much it's been amazing check out big scared big scared this isn't gonna be our last time um collaborating with each other um i appreciate it all so much thanks y'all <laughs> <laughs>